Hello everyone, uh, I hope you can hear me. Welcome at Lynx, we're still in Paris, still the same office. I just moved the setup a bit uh, far from here, but it's basically the same room. Um, I hope, yeah, let me know in the chat if, if the sound and video is okay, we are, we are live. Um, I have a few, I have a, a lot of things to, to say tonight. It's been quite some time since we've been communicating in, a, in an official manner. Um, so I, um, you know, this video will have like three different main topics, like the hardware and deliveries, then the software where I will show you demos, and then some stuff about the, the company itself. Um, so uh, where to start? Uh, I think what you know we, we, we need to touch base on the on the deliveries. Uh, so the good news is that you have to know that the next batch of devices is coming, that we're sending to our Kickstarter backers tonight uh, a survey uh, to know more about the, the delivery, if there are any issues with the, with the order, etc. Uh, I, uh, I will need to be in contact with the first backer because I will uh, hand deliver the, the headsets to, to him. That's uh, something I want to do. Uh, because without our backers, we wouldn't be here. Uh, so uh, thanks again for the support. So this first batch uh, will come in just a few weeks. And to give you a precise like timeline, right now they are being manufactured. Uh, and we expect them to be in your hands in June. That's, that's what we are targeting. Uh, so it's really the, the finish line. And so you know we, we had a first batch of devices that came out uh, uh, a few months ago now uh, from the factory uh, and those first devices um, were were not sent to end users because they, they were sent to partners and developers for many reasons one of the first is that it was not conformant to the quality status that we wanted and the software was not mature enough but what you will get in your hands uh, is links r1 uh, right with the specs uh, and with a lot of software that we'll talk about uh, later. Um, so if the, if the number one, if, if the first backer doesn't want or cannot uh, have this delivery uh, handled, then I will reach to the second backer and uh, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, it will be fun. Uh, I, I'm not sure we'll live stream this one, but uh, I, you know, I'm definitely excited to finally and this device to, to, to our backers that uh, really deserve that because like like us, you waited a long time, so uh, thank you. Uh, and then we will process all the orders for people that pre-order the headset after the Kickstarter campaign and uh, businesses that have like massive orders uh, with us. And that will take place between June and October or something, sometime like that. So depending on where you are in the queue, you know what to expect from us. It cannot go faster as all the previous videos I made. Uh, what we are doing is not easy, um, as you all know and understand. Uh, if we could have been faster, uh, I, would, I would have gladly uh, done that, and, and you know it. So that's, that's for the, the surveys and the next batch and, and, and all of that. Um, I just want to let you know that from what we are seeing from the the factory and the, the first test that we you know we pass some certification for FCC and uh, C and all that stuff, uh, the, the the quality is is extremely good. Uh, the, so some of you were able to test the headset during uh, during shows where we we could put it on your head, um, uh, you know, in France or in the U.S. or uh, in Taiwan over time. Um, it, it, it's it's even better uh, with with like the, the finished one and that that's you know the point where we are ready to uh, to set the links free uh, in the wild. So I mean we're we're very happy and we, we can't wait to put those devices in your hands. Um, and now that the software is very mature to like update update the headsets, have a, a correct life cycle of application, have some applications that are actually um, you know like samples of like games and uh, a web browser and we'll touch base on that and I'll try to show you uh, everything I can tonight. Um, the feedback we have uh, so far also to share with the community is that we we attended a show, 
a few weeks ago that is called Laval Virtual. It's in uh, it's in France. It's one of the biggest AR VR show for Europe. I would say it's the AWE of Europe. Um, and uh, like they have like I don't know like eight thousand people, which is you know massive for Europe to be just have something dedicated for AR and VR. Uh, and at that show, we had the biggest booth, like bigger than uh, HTC and Meta and all those all those people, because we wanted to put a to put out a statement. Like, and it was in two parts. All the demos on that booth were not coming from Links. We were showing what our partners are starting to build, uh, and the integration that we are seeing out uh, now, very soon in the wild. Um, and and you know we, we really wanted to, to set the, the stage and set the tone about like what we are doing is you know ambitious and, and difficult but we are here to stay and we are you know we want to be this European champion of uh, mixed reality and I'm pretty sure we're we're still on track for that so that was exciting the feedback was very positive on both the device and like, like how the company is doing and how we are being perceived by both the community and people outside of AR and VR that want to test it in their business or want to to deploy because they have like a proof of concept already. Uh, so we are, we are going to see massive deployments of links uh, over time, and we are working with partners to address that. And like you know, like not only sell a headset, but for businesses, they need like all the software um, between the headset and their application, and for uh, gamers and uh, end users to be able to do what whatever they want with the headset, use it, use it with Steam VR with their computer, uh, use it with controllers, uh, and and we still have this spirit of being very open. Uh, and I'm going to show you again. I I'm, I don't want to spoil you. I'm teasing you a lot. I know, but we have a, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting demo uh, afterwards. Um, so about the the software now. Um, the, the, the software is basically ready. We are in this final sprint as well. It, it's really matching with the hardware timeline. We are in the final sprint of you know having everything put together with OpenXR being stable, uh, with you know being able to go from from our launcher to an application, get back to the launcher without like having a black screen or stuff like that. Um, it, it sounds easy, but there are many, many things and many operations uh, that needs to to be right to to have this uh, headset running because we are using a lot of sensor. We are do we have a a crazy runtime. We use a crazy lens. It was it was very very uh, complicated. But now it's getting stable. Uh, I think um, we like we have a new release of our OS uh, second uh, end of May, which is right before the shipment of the of the batch. So uh, that that is like the first like 1.0, uh, you know, something very stable both in AR and VR. Hand tracking is amazing still, of course, um, and the apps are running very smoothly. We had we had issues like you know like power and um, uh, the, the runtime and you know on the power it was like when when the headset is not plugged, uh, we would see a drop in the frame rate and stuff like that. That is really annoying with uh, standalone headsets sometimes. So we we, we, you know, we are working very on the very low end of uh, Android, and we are tuning a lot of the drivers, the thermal system, um, the the scheduler. Uh, we have, we, we, we are, we have a lot of people that are not involved in AR and VR at all. They're just doing low level stuff. They don't care that our Android system is, you know, not a car system or a phone or a drone or a headset. They they are like very very low. Uh, on that hand, and we are optimizing in all the stack to to be able to run uh, that headset very smoothly for three hours of continuous usage. So the you know it's it's really hard to run the systems that are really power hungry um, in a sustainable uh, manner. But uh, we that that's what we are doing. We are doing the final test uh, right now. So now we are getting to the part of the video where I will try to show you demos. Before we dive into the demos, because it's a complicated process for me here, because I cannot have that video here and uh, the view in the headset at the same time, so I will need like to unplug. You will lose this feed. You will still hear me, but I will need some time to like plug the headset and launch the the, the apps. 
So before we switch to that, uh, you might have some basic question. I will tr I will scroll through the through the chat right here, um, and and we'll we'll have we'll have some demos. Uh, and I, I hope you'll be as excited as I am. I cannot show you everything. There are things that will uh, will benefit a June or May uh, PR announcement because there are like some exciting integration with third parties that will enable. Everything we I dreamed about about uh, mixed reality, uh, especially around computer vision and that stuff. But you, I think you can guess from the demos uh, I, I will show you. But the possibilities are are now endless. Okay, so I'm just scrolling through the questions. If there are any, I see a lot of familiar faces. One last thing uh, before we switch to the to the demos, uh, I will I will. Uh, talk about the the, the company uh, and and like how we are doing. Uh, we, we're doing very well. Uh, it's overly complicated on all fronts, but for what we are doing, it's doing very well. Um, and what you know, may, I, I'm not that much online. I'm not tweeting a lot or posting on LinkedIn as often as I want, or be able to uh, participate in the Discord or uh, on, on Reddit. Because those last weeks, I mean, from February, I've been like deep down and like most of my time and, and some of my colleagues as well was uh, dedicated to uh, a huge uh, fundraising we are conducting. Uh, so this is, this is taking most of my time right now. And if you feel I'm not getting back to you, it's not that I don't want or that I'm doing something else. We are still doing the same thing. We're still dedicated to, to, to links and uh, what we're doing here. Uh, still the same thing for those last three years. It's just that it's taking a lot of time because it's uh, it's a big operation. It will allow us to scale to the next level where we want to, where I want to bring this company. So, you know, uh, sorry if I, I cannot get back to all the emails I, I receive. Uh, it's it's you know I, I have a lot of uh, of uh, workload to 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 deal with. That is very important for links and like what we what we want to have in this ecosystem just to give you a, uh, a good reason like maybe some of you are still chasing me um okay what is your largest enterprise order uh that is a question uh, is that coming from one of my competitor i i cannot answer i i, I can say it's in the thousands which is which, which is insane for or, or scale but yeah I, I will not give you a, a precise number but it's it's good uh, as I said we are going to see huge deployments of links devices this year and next year um, any updates on the controller progress or case um, so the, so the case is going to be like later this year. The controller is certainly is what most of these people in this office are uh, working on. Uh, and I, by respect for what they are doing, it's not ready. I will not talk too much about it, but it's it's in uh, intense development, uh, and we we want to show you that uh, very soon. Something I completely forgot to show you about hardware is something a lot of people kept asking me over the, the years where we've been showing links is that the headsets, um, uh, you know, we almost always show it open on the side. So like when you, when you put it on your head, you know, it's, it's open for uh, mixed reality. And I'm finally happy and able to show you uh, that part that is also now coming out uh, from the factory and that will be in the, the box of the headset as well. It's delivered uh, as an accessory. Uh, it's the, we, we call it the, the face foam, it's the, it's the pad. It was one of the most complicated uh, shapes to, to design and to mold and to get right at the factory. Um, but basically, when you, when you use your headset, uh, there are magnets uh, around and you can just clip it like this and now when you put it on your head, you, you, uh, you can see it's much larger than the headset itself because it's uh, built to be also compatible with glasses and it completely changes the, the, the perception of, the, of, of you as you're wearing the, the headset. Let me show it to you, you see like, you know, it's, it's, th there is a, a perfect obscuration um, and 
if I have glasses, it could be uh, it could fit uh, as well. Um, but it's placed with magnets, uh, so you can just unplug it like this. It's very convenient, very ergonomic. Uh, it's it's built in, um, and I wanted to show it to you. Uh, I hope it will fit all of you. Uh, we'll we'll see with the feedback of the of the next batch. Um, okay. Is the FOV noticeably, noticeably limited with it on? It's a very good question because when you are in AR with the with the periphery on the side, I think your brain filters all of that together, and you have you you, you might feel a larger field of view for AR. So if you use AR with the pad on, which is something I don't advise uh, at all. Uh, you you m might feel that it's getting narrower, but it it doesn't change the eye relief or the eye box position. So, on the paper, it doesn't change the field of view you have uh, onto your eye. Uh, but you might perceive it that it will be lower. Um, which country will you work hard the most to build new business so far? I can share that we are discussing with uh, distributors uh, in the US, in Japan, in New Zealand, and uh, like in uh, Oceania for uh, a long time now. <laughs> They've been waiting for quite some time. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of people in Europe. For all the other regions, uh, we haven't yet reached any deal or heavy discussion with partners in South America uh, or uh, or other parts of uh, Africa and uh, Asia, but we want to to target as large as possible. And right now we're in the in the process of meeting with people that could like resell the headset online in their shops. Um, so we're we're really ramping up that part as well. Um, so some of them are saying, "Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> For the love of God, when are we shipping to beggars? You will have to rewind. I'm sorry." Um, Okay, well, there, there are so many questions. Maybe I'll, I'll you know, let, let's maybe uh, cool down. Uh, let's get the demos because I think the demos also might answer a lot of things uh, for you. So as I told you, it's a complicated process. I will have like to, I will have to unplug that camera. Uh, so I will use that headset uh, to show you uh, some application. I will try to show you free demos, okay? Please stay here. Um, and it, yeah, it's exciting. You'll see. Um, so I will unplug the camera. So you should be. So let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat if you still hear me now. So the the image should should be frozen, but you should be able to to hear me. Okay, can you hear anything? Okay, image is frozen, it's okay, don't worry. Okay. Okay. So now you're seeing what I'm seeing in my left eye, okay? Um, so, well, this is, this is the office. Uh, okay, so that was my camera. This is, um, I'll just check very quickly that you're, you can see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, let's, back, let's get back to business. All right. So what, what you're seeing right now is uh, what I see. Uh, let's, okay. Uh, so this is the, the launcher of the, of the headset. Um, okay. Um, so you can switch back and forth between AR and VR, that's cool. Uh, I will launch that demo. Maybe I will need to relaunch the, the system. I don't know, well, we'll see.
Oh, okay. So we, we don't have an automatic ground detection or the Guardian system uh, set up yet, but it's, it's a work in progress. So I'm setting up the ground right now. Okay. I'm getting back up. I, I hope you can still hear me. Okay, I need to come from, okay. Well, and now there is like this car. Uh, it's a bit far. It's a bit in the wall as well, but that's okay. And you can see the sixth off running. Okay. And you can switch the color of the car. It's pretty cool. So that, that's that's a very you know uh, it's one of the sam one of the samples of the so this is this is the same scene in, in VR so right now I'm in I'm in VR and I, I can switch back to AR that's cool uh, so this is this is the like you know very very uh, basic application of uh, of the headset uh, and you can see that the graphics are pretty good for uh, I mean we're we're really pushing the we are really pushing the, the headset to its limits uh, in terms of what we can do both in AR and, and, and VR. Uh, so I will uh, show you something else now. So I, I, I can like recenter the recenter the scene. So maybe that's that looks better now. Um, I have a long cable, but not that long. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the launcher. All right, so, yeah. I'm going to show you, I hope you can still hear me and that the stream is still going on, I have no idea. I'm going to, I'm going to show you this demo. Everything you see is made in Unity with uh, OpenXR. So this is a, we are now in, the, in, a, in a temple, and the very cool thing is that I can see my hands and then I can open like a portal, like I can I can open a frame to see the AR part. Yeah. And I can see my desk behind me. So it's this gesture. It's pretty cool. So it's using AR, VR, hand tracking, all of that together, six stuff. Pretty simple, but it's pretty pretty effective. Uh, so that was a, another very cool demo that uh, the team cooked up. All those are uh, are going to be uh, available on our website with the source code for developers to, to use. Okay, now I'm going to show you the demo I'm most excited about. Uh, I will just check on the chat that I'm still uh, streaming. Okay, I have a black screen. I'm just going to reboot the headset. Give me uh, a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm. I need to like restart the process because the last demo is, I think, um, one of the coolest, and uh, I think you will understand why exactly. You know, like other headsets on the market they will let not let you uh, tap into most of the sensors in the headset. And I think that's uh, not great, especially for experimental stuff around AR mostly and computer vision. So I will show you, uh, I'll show you the, the latest on that. Okay. So the headset is booting back. Give me... 30 more seconds, it's getting, I, I can see the image now. Okay. I'm back. All right. So for the last demo, it's a very simple demo. You'll see. There, there is actually not 
not much in the scene. But you can, you can feel the potential. So this is what we are seeing through the left eye and we are grabbing the frames in real time without any added la latency and like that that frame here is what we are what, what that camera is seeing you know like the, the 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 left one so you're free as a developer to grab the frames without any added latency it's like a zero copy um, zero copy buffer like the only copy that is made is uh, b basically rendering back the texture on this quad here and on that one as well, uh, being transferred to the GPU. And you can see in the background that this is this is the pass through uh, that we have, um, and 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 those are the frames you can you can grab and you can feed them directly to OpenCV to any other third party libraries. You can do the same stuff with the six dot information with the IME data and, and all of that. So this is just to tease you about what's coming, okay? I, I'm, it doesn't feel like uh, a lot, but I'm pretty sure that developers here can feel the, the potential. And again, you can see that there is no perceived latency uh, in, in the, 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 the treatment you can do of the image. Uh, like the, the, the copy is directly the frame that is described in a, in a, in a pointer uh, in a hardware buffer, so it's really performance. This is the, the so the the left image. You can grab the right one. You can grab the AR cameras. You can grab the six of whatever you want. But it's going to open a lot of doors for experimental stuff about uh, AR and especially more even with uh, computer vision that can now you can feed those those frames uh, into uh, into algorithm of any kind or stream them over. Um, uh, a PC to do more uh, intense computing and so that's about it um, yeah hi I will try to I will try to get back online with the real camera um, this is th this is the view from the headset it's very funny but not very high definition um, give me give me a give me a second okay all right Alright, I'm trying to get back online. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be working very efficiently. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, that was uh, not something you should do, uh, like demo your product like that in real time, but we were so excited and we really wanted to show you the, the progress. Um, so now I will take the questions you might have uh, related to either the demos or what you had before. Uh, okay, so I'm scrolling back up. Okay, you posted a lot of messages. Okay. Oh, Bradley is there. <laughs> Hi. Um, hmm. Will it be possible to synchronize multiple headsets play area? Yeah, we are working on that with different uh, ideas. Uh, one of them is potentially a patent, so I, I don't want to spoil stuff. But yeah, yeah, we, we have like a multiplayer stuff in AR coming up. Uh, is that screen copy? Yes, I use screen copy. Um, I know. Uh, so if you saw, saw some screen tearing, just to let you know that I was streaming over USB-C and uh, screen copy so like screen copy is doing some mpeg compression of the feed it's it was not the raw feed and uh, in my options i used 25 fps for streaming and only the left eye so 1600 by 1600 frame 
um, so the the MPEG compression might might mess some of the stuff. I haven't, I did I didn't look at the at the stream in real time, but in the headset, uh, the experience is at uh, 90 frames per second, and it was it's very smooth. So, Cranky is asking about Lux. Lux will be released with the first batch of the headsets. Okay. I like the. Okay, this is pretty cash money. <laughs> yeah. I I feel like especially for the backers that you you didn't pay uh, a lot of money compared to like what we have to uh, take for new customers now. Uh, I think you're getting a, a great deal of hardware and um, and you know AR and VR stuff with uh, for 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 the price and uh, so I think it's definitely worth the wait and I think it's very cash money. Any project in development in Godot four yet? So I haven't seen anything yet being built with Godot. I just know that uh, someone from the Ultralight team, uh, Rodolphe, worked uh, on, like tried to uh, make Lynx compatible with Godot and that worked, but I haven't yet seen anything built for that. That being said, if you're building with OpenXR in mind, it should be uh, for another headset with Godot, it should be compatible with Lynx very, very easily. Hmm. Is that the Lynx case in the background? So that's the that's the final that's the packaging. It's not the case. It's what you will uh, receive uh, from the from the first uh, orders, and that what we've been sending uh, everywhere. How do you stream this feed to your PC? I have my I have my smartphone uh, plugged over USB-C to uh, OBS, as you might have seen on my screen. Um, so not even a frame of delay. So the the guy is asking a question here, uh, like, do we have a delay? when we're grabbing the frames to feed them into a filter or OpenCV or some computer vision stuff. It's, this, it's, it's the latest image that is uh, being um, uh, received by the system, but you have to take into account the processing time um, for your stuff. So the image I displayed, I did not run any processes there, so it's very raw. Uh, so it was instant. If you do some heavy computation also on the headset, then it might have some latency. So you need to be careful uh, about not being too intense. Uh, the good news is that I, I don't want to spoil that. Uh, it's, it's burning me, but we are going to announce in a, in a few weeks uh, like major third-party ecosystems uh, for computer vision compatible with, with links like natively. And, and we've been like tracking stuff with that and its performance is amazing. Please allow us to cancel the pledge for controllers, thanks. So in the survey we're going to send, if there are things you need to change in your order, you'll be able to, to leave a comment and we'll find a way to uh, compensate if there are uh, any anything that you don't want anymore. So someone is asking, can you, can you render a nerf uh, with the images from the headset directly? I would not advise you to do that locally because it's a very uh, uh, computer, compute intensive process. So what you could do though, is send those, th those images uh, over the air, uh, over Wi-Fi through, I don't know, like uh, WebRTC or some protocol and process that on a PC uh, or in a data center or wherever. Um, maybe you've seen when I was scrolling through the apps uh, in the menu, there is an app called CloudXR and this is something like to be able to stream 
from a data center or from your computer uh, Steam VR content, and you can, you know, you, you you can stream things away and process that process there, uh, and just use the headset as a as a render as a rendering machine. Um, so the next question you might have is, well, if we can grab the frames and send them to whatever wherever we want, it's great, but what about privacy and that stuff? And it's the reason why you don't see that on other headsets on the market. And we're working on a, on a set of uh, uh, low-level uh, uh, XR, I would say, uh, UX rules where when a camera is accessed by a process that is not for pass-through, we will let the user know about that. And we are, we are, we're testing stuff, we will test stuff over time, but we want to get this thing right. I think it's very powerful for the ecosystem to be able to tap into those capacities, into those, those capabilities. So we, we'll, we'll just find a way to uh, let the user know about what's going on with, with the data on the headset. Um, there are ways, you know, like smartphone, it was not the case before, now we know when things are accessed, we are going to use uh, the same kind of, uh, of stuff there. Uh, someone is asking, um, as someone else said, how many units are you hoping to get in the initial batch for delivery in June? Uh, it's in hundreds. It's not yet thousands, uh, because it's like the last mile before the, the thousands of units being built uh, per month. Uh, so it's, uh, it's hundreds. We'll see how many are really built. I will share the numbers of how many headsets we'll send from that batch. Uh, in June. Can you remote render MR or just VR? Well, if you want to do MR remotely, the 6DOF information and the pass-through information will still come through your headset. Um, I mean, if you want to use our, our pipeline, of course. Um, but the, the VR part, like the augmentation part of uh, of the MR stuff is can be rendered uh, outside of the of the system. Will we see a demo or gameplay trailer of a game that is both AR and VR? Yes, I'm hoping for something this summer, uh, and I'm hoping that some of you that will receive your headset will also build some cool stuff with that. NFTs, hopefully never. Now we're 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 not. That's that's not our line of business. Um, how is the attachment external plate coming along and will that be supplied with the units in June? So we have an attachment uh, accessory where like, you can plug other sensors on the headset. That is something uh, we will share, like if you want to 3D print it or buy it from us. Uh, either way, but it will not be delivered in the box with the first units because th those will be processed at the factory uh, directly. Uh, can you send a pass-through to another Lynx device? Yes, you could do that then. Uh, can an application similar to Luma AI be feasible using Lynx? I don't know what Luma AI is, I'm sorry. How oh, compact can you pack the headset for travel? Well, um, it's it's not really uh, uh, flexible, uh, so you can just only play with that dimension here. If you want to, to put it in a in a backpack, I would I would advise you to. Well, sometimes I carry it in my backpack, and the hardware guys here hate me for that. Uh, but you can you like you can slide it li like this. Um, Can we expect first hands-on reviews of headsets to pop up on YouTube? Yes, that's that's also uh, coming with the first batch of devices. Because as I told you, now we are ready to uh, let that headset live its life outside of our control. And that will come with, with reviews, of course. So you, you might see some of these uh, coming up, I don't know, in June or July. Uh, we will get back to the to the to the YouTubers and reviewers we've been working with. Um, we will reach out to our network of friends, and if they accept, then uh, we'll gladly uh, send them something. 
If you have any ideas for people you want to have a review from, just let me know. Let, let send us something about that. Do you get staff for website customer relation? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we we are hiring. Uh, so it's it's related also with the fundraising we are conducting, but we have a lot of people that will come and the team will grow both in engineering but also in um, communication in you know being more just organized with uh, what's out there and uh, it, it it will come along you know we, it's it's part of the process of the company growing but we need we needed to be you know just on the maybe too much. I don't know, but we needed to be very laser focused on reaching a technical quality for the products, and we couldn't lose too much resources. I wanted to, I needed to put all the resources in production and uh, hardware and software. Um, can you get rid of the back part of the headset and you just use it as a PC VR headset? You can use it as a PC VR headset over USB-C or Wi-Fi, however you want. You cannot detach the back of the headset. And I would not advise you to do that because you will lose the balance, which is a great ergonomic feature of the headset. And uh, some people here lost too much time and efforts. I mean, we, we invested a lot of time and effort, sorry, into making sure that the balance is right and the ergonomics uh, can fit most people and that the headset is comfortable. This is some. This is one of the feedback we hear a lot is that the headset is comfortable. So please don't cut anything, don't detach anything. Um, it's built for that. What is the most mature development environment for Lynx R1, Unity or Snapdragon Spaces? So Snapdragon Spaces is coming to, to Lynx. We, we're, we're working with Qualcomm on that. Um, although today, as of today, Unity is, like before Unity SDK that is online, is what you, what you can use to build immediately apps. Uh, and all the apps I've been showing now today have been built uh, directly with Unity without any other uh, third party integration. What's a good time to apply for a job there when you're not so distracted? So I'm not the only one uh, managing uh, recruiting uh, in the company, uh, but you, you can send us an email. Um, you can find it online. You can, you can find our contact. You can message us on LinkedIn. Uh, we try to read everything and review everything. And, and, and as I told you, we're growing a lot. So we take a lot of, we pay a lot of attention to people interested in the company. And I think what made Lynx a success, or at least where we are now, uh, whatever it's called, uh, uh, you know, we don't know yet, uh, is is the team. Uh, it's a still, a, you know, it's a small team that we're able to that was able to deliver that that thing. So we're um, we are very um, attentive to uh, wh who we are working with, uh, but we we review everything. As Lynx obtained technical certification of Japan, and uh, of course that's crispy asking that, um, uh, it's it's currently uh, this certification for Japan is more thorough than the one for uh, FCC in the U.S. or C for Europe. Uh, it, it's being it's being done right now by uh, by Compile or uh, or Assembler. They're taking care of the certification for for us as well. And I know they're conducting the Japan one as so. well. Do you guys have interest in partnerships with studios to develop high quality XR experiences? Yes, of course, of course we do. Uh, what about Wear OS? No, no, we, we're, we're using AOSP, which is uh, Android without the Google layer uh, for now. Um, how many hours of development until maturity of the software do you estimate? So on our part, I would say it's a matter of maybe two, three weeks. Um, so we will be writing time even in advance for the for when it, when the headset is going to to be out. Um, 
any news on the eye tracking attachments? Um, no, I, I have not anything new I can share today. Uh, it's still a it's it's still a project uh, for this floor here. Uh, are you sure the survey will be emailed tonight? Yeah, it's going to be emailed tonight. Yeah, uh, just let me get back home, please. Can you describe how smooth the PCVR experience is with index controllers? Uh, it's hard to describe that. You have to experience that for yourself. But I would say it's pretty smooth. Uh, you know, like 90 frames per second, light I'm striking. It's as smooth as, as it as it can be. How are the custom lenses manufactured? Will we sell any surplus lenses? Uh, the custom lenses are manufactured in the south of France. Um, they were previously manufactured uh, in uh, in Hong Kong, and we brought that back to uh, to France. We found a good enough supplier um, that is going, and uh, the, the the heads that you will receive is using those lenses. Um, they are they are uh, they are molded. Uh, and I will not tell a lot more. Uh, as you might know, the the company we worked with for those lenses was acquired by Apple in January. Officially, I mean nothing was official, uh, but you know I saw them with Apple badges in a conference in January. So I would say it was official in January. Uh, but yeah, they've been acquired by Apple. Uh, so those those you know. I, don't want to detail too much about those lenses, uh, other than what you can find online or in the literature. Are you using the standard Chronos OpenXR loader, to, or do app require a custom loader library to work on the headset? We do require a custom loader, but it's compatible. I mean, it's it's on par feature-wise with what the Chronos OpenXR loader is doing, and the loader is not changing. We're iterating on the runtime, of course, but the loader is still the same. Uh, what was the company acquired by Apple name? Uh, it's called Limbak, L-I-M-B-A-K. It was a design, uh, optics design house. So engineers, very good engineers working in optics. Uh, I think it was probably the best, the best um, high performance, uh, XR design house for optics, so I, I'm absolutely not surprised and happy for them for that acquisition. Uh, does the Apple acquisition affect Lynx production? No, 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 no. And I am, um, you know, they weren't acquired for that lens design anyway. Is the Volvic Brother ready? It is. Uh, I'm not demoing it today uh, because we it, it's ready, but. Uh, the, the, the team is uh, the brother that will be delivered in the headset uh, would be much perf much more performance. I'm not getting into specifics, but uh, Volvic is doing amazing work. Uh, it, we demoed the brother in, in Laval Virtual, the, the, the show a few weeks ago, uh, and, and what they've been doing is absolutely amazing. How are the uh, I'm not taking. Uh, I'm going to take a few more questions, but uh, after you know, I'll have to go. I have the survey to, to send. Oh, are all the robotic arms at the factory? They're all working well. Thank you. What do you expect the XR headset from Apple to look like? I don't like to talk about other headsets. I'm. I'm waiting. I'm waiting like you. Okay. We'll see how much we have to wait. Maybe not a lot. Maybe maybe a lot. We'll see. When will you do the next announcement? I'm planning to do the next announcement when we when we deliver the headset because I'm I'm tired I'm getting tired of coming up here and giving you excuses for not delivering anything. So the next one is is only for good stuff. Um, how is the quality of watching films on a headset? I would I wouldn't use a Lynx headset to watch movies to be honest. Uh, but it, you know, it's good enough. Like, pretty much, uh, other headsets on the same like resolution and, and field of view. 
Uh, okay, I think we'll stop here. Um, it was it was fun doing that that the you know this update. I'm glad we I could make the demos work, uh, even though you didn't have both feeds. Um, you were saying thank you for my time, but thank you for watching as well. Um, yeah, is one terabyte the max size of the SD card? Yeah, uh, that's that's what we noticed. Uh, one terabyte is quite a lot. If you need more, let us know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I I'll see you soon. Uh, you will hear from us, of course, through various ways. You will hear from us. I can tell you that we'll communicate about integration of the headset with like uh, some exciting stuff in the ecosystem uh, before AWE, um, and we'll show some cool demos. Meanwhile. Uh, in the meantime that we are producing because that's what we're doing now. So thank you very much. I will see you soon um, and always happy to give you the latest of what we're cooking. Um, see you, some of you, I might see you at AWE, maybe I w I'm planning to go um, and uh, otherwise uh, I'll see the first bagger uh, on his doorstep with a headset, uh, hopefully very soon. Thank you. Have a good night or good day wherever you are. Um, and um, I will uh, I will see you next time. Bye.